Hello and welcome. You've tuned into Business Lunch. I'm Nisha Podar and with me as always is my co-anchor Pavitra Parekh. Uh, so Pavitra, market really looking good today but there are several yeah. global cues that the market is really digesting. But at this point I would say that Nifty 50 is making all the effort uh, possible to break above a certain level but it is um, not yet successful. So 17,984 level. So yes, kissing distance uh, to that 18,000 mark, whether or not we can really cross that mark is the big question that uh, we are really looking at as of today. When it comes to Bank Nifty, uh, it is underperforming the key indices, but some of the financials are the bigger supporters of Nifty 50 and the heavyweights like HDFC Twins are the ones which are contributing the most today. And the mid-cap universe in line with the key indices today, over 1% gain in tra uh, trade. When we talk about uh, the over Overall contribution coming in, I spoke about HDFC Twins, Big Boy Reliance Industries also since before its results till now has been showing very good performance along with some of the IT counters like even Infosys, l &T, and even some of the other financials like Kotak Mahindra Bank. NTPC, DRL, Apollo Hospitals are some of the losers in trade today. Like you said, we have a good looking screen and while we're not yet at 18,000, we're inching towards that level. What's important is that we opened above the re uh, resistance level at 17,850 and we've held above that level ever since the start, right? In fact, we've only moved higher. So let's see how the rest of the trading session pans out. Of course, a bunch of the volatility does come in usually in the second half. So we'll see how that goes. Today, a lot of the gains coming in from the auto pack and some of the IT names also supporting. So a few of the auto names are up on your screen. IT, in addition to the large caps, you have some of the mid caps also which are holding up quite well so take a look at few of those and pharma is quite split like ekta said you have drl apollo on the downside but you do have stocks like sun dvs which are seeing some good gains in terms of cues this week it is going to be all about the fed meeting that we're watching out for so that is the big cue for us to track and we're going to keep bringing you updates on that front but let's now talk about all of the individual stocks that are on our radar after you know their earnings that came through we have maruti they actually saw a robust set of q2 earnings the management commentary has also been extremely strong in fact brokerages have gone ahead and raised their target price and uh, Parikshit our colleague spoke to rc bhargava who's chairman of maruti suzuki and the company's growth outlook going forward so let's listen into that it's not fully behind us yet. There's still problems in some of the vehicles. And uh, we expect this problem to continue for at least another two months. Mm. So we have really not been able to produce uh, as much as we needed to produce, as much as the demand was there. That's why the back orders have gone up. Mm. And uh, there is scope for improvement. Right. Um, also, to ask you about uh, the growth of the automotive industry, you expect the automotive industry to grow at 8% uh, in the next fiscal. You said yes, that I... we're looking at record volumes for the auto industry. Will Maruti Suzuki's growth be in line with industry? We will attempt to do that, yes. Hmm. But uh, we also see... Uh, some pressure, some continued pressure when it comes to the entry level segment. Will yeah. that be a challenge uh, when it comes to meeting the industry growth rate? We have taken that into account when uh, we have made our projections for the next year. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Bhargav, now coming to uh, volumes of entry level cars, give us a sense as to on a quarter basis, how, how have they been impacted and uh, how, how do sales for the entry-level cars, the bread and butter segment for Maruti look like? The entry-level segment uh, in this quarter two has shown a growth. Mm. It's the first time it's shown a growth after many quarters. Mm. But I think this is the result of uh, the festival season and the fact that uh, whatever people could manage, they came out and bought now. Mm. We do not expect that this quarter two growth in you know, as we go ahead uh, this year. So, uh, I and just... uh, you know, over the last three years, this segment has declined by something close to 30% now. Hmm. So, I'll just uh, take that again. You're saying that you do not. All right, so that was the management of Maruti speaking to our colleague there. Let's just focus to another stock in news today, and that's Bandhan Bank. It's down 9% in trade. 
at the moment and it tanks as brokerages cut FY23 as well as the 24 earnings estimates after a weak set of Q2 numbers. And it was uh, earlier today that we spoke to the management. Well, Chandrasekhar Ghosh, MD and CEO of Bandhan Bank, told us that the slippages are likely to continue in the coming quarters. However, they are expecting the business growth to be strong for the rest of the financial year. Let's listen in to his forward-looking commentary on Bandhan Bank. The normal sum of this, the slippage will come. It is, it is now coming on that the... 500 to 800 crores has come to this the quarter basis on that. So when the second and third quarter will come, which the business growth level is coming very high, there is an uh, first the point of that the NIM. NIM are always we are looking on that the 7.5 to 8 percent is our are uh, targeted, and we'll be like to reach. All right, that is the Bandhan Bank management. The street really not taking light of any of those comments. The stock is still down around 9%. The other one which is tanking in trade is Intellect Design. This after weak quarterly earnings. The main uh, issue this time came through on the margin front. It's at 16% versus the 26% that we saw in the corresponding quarter last year. So the management, however, has told CNBC TV18 that it is confident of achieving the 20% margin mark for the full year. So let's listen in to what they had to say. If you are looking for the margin, there are two reasons. We move from our product business to a platform business, mm. uh, which is resulting into a uh, not immediate booking, but we booked four orders and those orders translate into $2.9 million. And there are $3.1 million which has got uh, shifted where we won the order, but contracting okay. is not completed before 30th September. So if you put that in context, I think we are in the... A same number, around 125 crores of EBITDA would have been there. Just 20% plus on EBITDA margins, uh, that's what we are saying. All right. So the markets are punishing those particular counters who are not giving good performance in terms of earnings. So on that note, we'll slip into a short breather on business lunch. But remember, electronic subsystems contract manufacturer DCX Systems IPO has opened for subscription today. And we'll get you all the details after a very short break. So stay tuned for all the IPO action as well.